Reset Conference. I am so excited to be with you today. Uh, I'm honored beyond grateful that I have been asked to share with you. I'm sharing with you today about resetting our instrument. In this crazy, crazy time, how do, how do we reset? How do we program and train our mind to still practice excellence, to still strive for the very best? Like I said, it's a crazy time. It's hard. It's not easy. But People are watching and souls are in need of being saved as a result of what we carry and what we do, okay? Let's start with this. We're gonna go straight into the word because that's where the meat is, that's where we get help, all right? Let's go to 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 23, all right? And today I'm gonna use my trusty phone, <laughs> all right? So, we are talking about David. King David, at this time, he is not the king. He is a shepherd boy who is serving in the fields when no one is watching, okay? Notice I said he's serving in the fields when no one is watching. A lot of times, singers, worship leaders, musicians, we love to get on the platform and serve, but a lot of it has to do with us being behind the scenes, serving others and serving those in need, okay? But the spirit of the Lord, this is verse 14, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. So right now, Saul has a distressing spirit that the, that the Lord has uh, placed on him, and he is in need of something soothing, something to help him calm his nerves. Uh, and it shall be that he will play it with his hand. When the dis uh, distressing spirit from God is upon you, you shall be well. Verse 17 says, So Saul said to his servants, Provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Verse 18 then one of his servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. So he's skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Let me read that again. Verse 18, starting with, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Let me stop right there. Notice he's skillful in his playing. Yes, many of us are gifted and talented. God has blessed us with gifts beyond measure, where music is, is where we are able to uh, captivate and, and pull people and bring them in. However, after all of the skillful playing has is, is been done, David is a mighty man of valor. He's a man of war. He's prudent in speech. He's a handsome person, nice to look at. And most importantly, the Lord is with him. So if you take away his skills of playing, what is he? Who is he? Who are we? Take away my gift of singing and, and being able to, able to vocal arrange. Who is Charlene? Is she a good person? Does the Lord walk with me? We need to ask these questions because a lot of times we forget that on the stage. If you give the best of you on stage and you treat others wrong off stage, what is the point of you serving on stage? It's basically void. You're, you're no good and you, ha you lack power. We have power in what we do, okay? Verse 19, therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. Again, remember I said he was tending to the sheep. No one is looking at what he's doing. He's serving his father's sheep, okay? And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. Verse 21, so David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. Verse 22, then Saul sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me for he has found favor in my sight. And so it was whenever the spirit 
from God was upon Saul that, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Verse 23, let's read that again. And so it was whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul that David would take a harp, he would take his instrument and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. He's a man of valor. He's a man after God's own heart. He's prudent in his speech. He's good looking, and he just so happens to be a skillful player. So all of those things need to start first. What is your instrument, your heart? What is it saying about you? When you walk out of a room, when you walk into the building of the church, when you walk into the grocery store, what are people saying about you? They don't know that you're a singer when they first meet you. They don't know that you're a musician. What are they saying about you? If they're saying negative stuff, then we need to fix what we're doing. We need to change our whole outlook, our whole perspective on what we do and why we do it. Now, look again. Uh, and so it was whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Saul would become refreshed and well. So after uh, David is a good man, he's a man of valor, he plays well, he plays skillfully. And the power that he has as a result of his playing, it casts off the spirits that are on Saul. That is the power that we carry as a result of being singers and musicians. It's not about necessarily, I don't want to say you have to be the greatest singer, you have to be the, the greatest musician. There is some skill level that is involved, no doubt. But I've worked with some of the greatest singers and musicians that are not the best singers and musicians. But when they walk into a room, the atmosphere just immediately changes. It's not because they opened their mouth and sang. It was because they expressed love for somebody else. It was because they expressed concern for somebody else. So when they went to the platform to serve and to sing and to play, it shined. All of those things shined more than the actual voice. So you could hear their heart. You could hear their heart. So that's, that's, that's the tool, one of the main tools that we have, the power that we have. Practice, no doubt. Practice your gifting, practice it with excellence, but it starts with our heart. If your heart is not in the right place, how can God be seen? How can God be glorified? He can't because it's all about us. It's all about what we want, what, how do we sound, how do we look kind of thing. Again, if the best of you, if you give the best of yourself on a platform instead of out in the world, out in the congregation, then you have a lot to work on, me included, okay? Let's move on. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'm going to skip a few verses. We're going to start with verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to go to verses 14 through 29. We are going to be talking about King Jehoshaphat. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Munites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. So we have the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Munites came to rage war against Jehoshaphat. Three different tribes coming to rage war against King Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hezazon Tamar, that is in En Gedi, alarmed Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. 
verse 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I'll read that again. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or be discouraged because of this, this large, this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, Verse 16, tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing up the pass of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeru. Verse 17, you will not have to fight this battle. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord. Uh, sorry, see the deliverance the Lord will give you Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. He's, he's reiterating this again. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. So they're following their leader. They're following their king. Verse 19, then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korathites, Kor, Korathites, sorry, stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a loud, loud voice. So let's, let's backtrack. Let's, let's backtrack a little. So the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. He's a descendant of Asaph. Asaph is one of the main musicians of the Bible, okay? He says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, listen, Judah in Jerusalem. This battle that these, these three tribes that are coming for you, don't be discouraged, don't be afraid. This battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Trust me, trust in the Lord, because it's this, you, you have nothing to worry about. Even though this whole army is coming against you, don't fret, don't worry. He says, tomorrow, march down. He's giving them orders. March down. Uh, they will be climbing up the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge. He's telling them exactly where they're going to be, what time of the day they're going to be there. You won't have to fight them. Take up your positions. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you Jerudah, Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. And the response of uh, uh, Jehoshaphat hearing um, Asaph's descendant was he bowed down with his face to the ground and all the people followed in pursuit. So they're following their leader. Whatever I do as a worship leader, I want to make sure my team is following the posture of my heart. So if I'm bending down to praise the Lord, if I'm lifting up my hands, if I'm saying, you know what, let's do better in this area, it starts with me. And then everyone else will follow pursuit, okay? Verse 20, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Verse 21, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for his splendor, for the splendor of his holiness, as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Their response to hearing negative comments, someone coming against them, negativity period. First of all, Jehoshaphat said, I'm going to seek the Lord. My people, we are going to seek the Lord. We're going to get on our face and we are going to seek the Lord and we're going to fast. That was one of their things. And we're going to seek him. We're going to figure out what we need to do, but God has the answer. Their response, they are praising the Lord. He appointed men to sing and to praise God for the splendor of his holiness. 
just because he's good, he's kind, he's merciful. And verse 22, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord said ambushes, ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Let's read that again. Verse 22, as they began to sing, sing and as they began to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites, so these two tribes, rose up against the men from Mount Seir. So the three tribes that were coming against Judah, Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat, two of them, the Ammonites and the Moabites, rose up against Mount Seir. So they're about to come against each other, against each other to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Can you picture that? <laughs> Just think about that for a second. The Ammonites and the Moabites, the, the three tribes, the three guys that were coming together to beat up this other guy, two of them say, let's go and get this guy and beat him up very bad. And then they all beat each other up and annihilate and slaughter each other. How does that happen? After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Verse 24, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one, the Bible says no one had escaped. Not one. Moabites, Mount Seir, Ammonites, all of them killed each other, <laughs> literally. So Jehoshaphat, verse 25, and his men went to carry off their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. Verse 26, on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it's called the Valley of Baraka to this day. Verse 27, then led by Jehoshaphat, their king, their leader, the worship leader, in this case, me, all of the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered, verse 28, Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. Verse 29, the fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Verse 30, and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. They got the, the word that they were being attacked. They went to seek the Lord, they fast. Then they receive a word from the prophet. This battle is not the Lord's. This battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Then their response is, let's worship and praise the Lord. Then the day of, the day of this large, vast army coming to attack them, they began to sing to the Lord, sing and praise him, and God caused ambushes. He set up ambushes. And from there, the three tribes destroyed each other on their own. They didn't pick up a spear. They didn't pick up a shield. They didn't pick up a knife or any other weapon. Their weapon was their voice. Their weapon was the instruments that they had. Our voice is a weapon, you guys. The, the tools that God has given us as musicians, singers, that is our weapon. That is our weapon. And if we don't use it wisely, it has no power. It lacks the power. We have the, the power to allow spirits to flee from people. We do. Why? Because it's here in the word of God. David was a regular man, just like me and you. 
And, and because he played his heart skillfully and his heart, first of all, his heart was in the right place and he just happened to be a skillful player. God utilized him to allow spirits to flee from Saul. In this case, God utilized the voices of the people of Judah and Jerusalem. While they're praising him, God is setting up ambushes. They didn't have to lift a finger. They took the plunder from the armies that were trying to kill them. The power, the power that we have is so, so strong, you guys, so strong. There are people in your congregation now that are hopeless, that are suicidal, that are going through divorce, that have wayward children, that are in need of finances because they don't know how they're going to make it. We have the power. We have the power to help these people, to encourage, to empower, to take off those spirits, to allow the singing, singing, just singing and praising, singing and praising, and miracles can happen. We have that power, but a lot of times we don't realize we have it. We lack it because we are so caught up in what we have, the, the gifting that we have. Oh, we sound good or we look good. It has nothing to do with that at the end of the day. Absolutely nothing. And especially in this season of worry, in this season of I don't know how I'm going to make it, in this season of I'm all by myself, I'm lonely, I'm depressed, I need help, I lost my job, I, I can't even go out to the store on a regular, I can't go to the beach like a, it, like a regular day. People are in need of the sound that we produce, the sound that we produce. And a lot of times we, as the musicians and the singers, we lack it because we are empty as well. So take the time for yourself. I've learned in this season that uh, God is broken up routine. He's just breaking up routine. And specifically, since I serve in the church and since I've served across the earth, he's broken up the routine of we meet every Sunday, we serve every Sunday. Monday is um, Bible study. Tuesday is musician's rehearsal. Wednesday is children's Bible study. Thursday is choir rehearsal. He's broken it up. He's broken it up. So a lot of times we depend on that. Uh, we're, we're involved in this and that's all we need to be involved in. That's our that's our one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. You cannot feed your spiritual man by coming just on Sunday, by getting fed on Monday for a rehearsal or a Bible study. You need that one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord to, so he can feed you, so he can speak to you one-on-one, -on -one. not someone else in your ear, but him directly telling you the things that you need to hear, showing you the things in the word of God that you need to see, convicting you of things that you have problems with. One thing I've, I've had a problem with for years, guys, I am not a timely person. Pray for me. Pray for me, guys. I've, I've never been a timely person as for as long as I can remember, and my husband absolutely hates it. <laughs> But one thing I love, one thing I love is my music. One thing I love is singing. But how can I grow? How can I be a better worship leader? How can I be a better servant serving on stage when I can't even be on time? Like just being real. So there's some things that I still have to work on. Even though I've been able to travel and see, man, I have to start with being on time and not even on time. One of our uh, old role managers said, um, when you're early, being on time is early. When you're on time, you're late. So I've got to be early. I've just got to be early in order to be on time. So look at things and, and uh, ways that you can improve. It may not be your voice. You may, you may be skilled to the point where let me see what else I can work on along with singing, along with playing. And it may be life skills. It may be being on time. It may be opening your mouth and speaking to people and saying, hey, how are you doing? Even though we're in a season of COVID, you still can speak to people. You still can be polite. You still can be cordial. 
So these are some things that we can work on, we can grow in, um, in this time, especially in this time. Build yourself up, especially in this time. Like God is, like I said, he stopped the routine of it all. So all of it is slowed down. So take the time to take time for yourself where you can grow. What things do I need to grow in? Do I need to practice more? Do I need to listen more? Do I need to be a better listener than a speaker? Because a lot of times as worship leaders, singers, musicians, we like to give our opinion instead of listening. I'm guilty. I'm guilty as well. So these are some things that we can work on. We have the power. We have the power. We have the tools. God has given us the tools and we should be able to be further along in our, in our, in our tools, further along with the power he's given us. But some things we have to acknowledge, we have to take off the veil and say, this is what I need to work on in order for God to really execute and fully utilize what he's given me. It starts with me first. Okay. All right. So how do we, I just talked about us reactivating, getting back in, getting in the word. If you're not in it, um, there's another saying that someone told me um, that is so true, and I want to make sure I say it right. Um, you can't show someone uh, where to go if you've never been there. So if you don't spend time in the Word of God, if you're not praying consistently, how can you show someone else? How can you tell someone else? And they'll know. A lot of times people will know if you're really faking it or if you're really striving to live it out. And especially on stage, guys. They can tell, <laughs> they can tell, they can tell when you're going through something, they can tell when you're faking it because it, be, it, it looks like a routine. I've seen it. I've done it. I've been guilty of it. So take that time, take that time to spend in the word of God, get your heart right first and everything else will fall in pursuit. How do we, uh, practical tools to utilize your musical gift with excellence. How do we get to a place of excellence? There's never going to be a place of perfection. There's not. We're not perfect. God didn't make us to be perfect. So there's always uh, um, striving for excellence. There's always a way to go higher. I've learned in, in, I'm only 35 guys, so I'm not old or anything. I've learned over these years that I, I strive to look up to people who do what I do how did they do it? How did they get there? What tools are they utilizing? And then I take their tools, their things, and I balance them with mine, mesh them together, and I make it into charlatanism, my own thing. So one of the people that I really look up to um, is Israel Holton. I just happened to sing with him. But prior to that, um, he is very gifted and talented in his writing ability. That's something I lack. I can write, but I feel like God is just anointing him for that. So some of the things he does, he likes to collab with other people. I've never done that. So I've got to work on that, collabing with other people so I can grow and learn um, and just listen. Listen to somebody else, their ideas and their what they're doing. Um, a lot of times Israel would say before he got to a place of everybody knowing who he was. He was in his living room uh, with his piano and he had no audience. He had salt, he had pepper shakers, and he would sing to them and allow s songs to just flourish that way. Um, my time, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, Kevin is my husband, and I have two children and a little one on the way, guys, I'm so excited. Caitlin is 12, Caden is one, and this new baby, I have no idea if it's a boy or girl, um, is due February 6th. Backtrack, when I uh, was not pregnant with Caden, we just had one child, it was my heart's desire to come out with my own music. I've always known I wanted to do that. I've always known God has called me to something further. And I got complacent uh, with Israel and Newbury. Believe it or not, he was telling me, Charlene, you gotta branch out. Yeah, you can still sing along and serve with them, but God has called you to other things. And so I began to speak to God and just ask him, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? What finances are you going to supply? Because I don't know what to do kind of thing. And he supplied it all. He started um, lining up certain people in my path to be able to um, get the EP out and to promote it well and to travel. Um, 
travel my own music, not as Charlene from Israel and Newbreed, but just Charlene Neal. How did I do that? I just seek the Lord like Jehoshaphat. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? And he started giving me the ideas. I remember we were on a trip to South Africa. I'll never forget. And I, he gave me the idea of my song, My Prayer. This is my prayer. Daily I'll live a life that reflects you. That the words that I say and the things that I think, may they glorify you. I wrote that on the plane and I had my laptop. And so, you know, on a plane, if you've ever ridden on a plane, the turbulence, the noise is loud, but I needed to record it. And I, my phone was dead. I had my laptop. I plugged my mi microphone in and I sang it just so I can get the idea. I'm not going to show you what it sounds like because it sounds horrible. I was totally off key, but I knew the concept, the idea, and God was just giving it to me that way. So if that's your desire, if that's what you feel God has called you to do, seek him and ask him, how do I do it? What, what tools do I need to do? And I've also learned in, in practicing excellence, getting to where you want to be, write everything down. I cannot stress that enough. This book and my red book, which is at, in my backpack in the other room, I write everything down, all my ideas, all my ideas, whether they are abstract, whether they are crazy. My husband hears some of my weirdest, cra I don't even say weird. They're ideas that God has given me. So I write them down, I type them out, and some of them have come to pass, like literally. Some of them have not. And they may not be in his will, but at least I took the time to write it down, what I want to do, how I want to do it. And if he allows it to come to pass, it'll come to pass. But you don't want to ever pray, God, I want to do this. I want to serve. I want to do this. I want to take me here, take me there. And you have no idea how to get there. Once you get there, you don't know how to communicate with people. You don't know what type of uh, skill level they're at. They may not be at your level. So you need to learn how to adjust and work with people of all ages, all colors, all, um, all giftings, write it down, write everything down and then start asking God, how do I do it? And when, when is the proper time? Whenever you want me to do it, help me to be ready for it. All right. So excellence, 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 practice. I can't stress that enough guys. Practice. Some of you are mothers. Some of you are fathers, husbands, wives. You have full-time jobs. You are college students. You are pastors. You have a lot on your plate. I get it. I totally get it. Don't stress yourself out because it, it, it will stress you out. However, practicing could be as simple as when you are doing the laundry, practicing a part that you're supposed to sing, practicing whatever lyrics that you need to learn. What a beautiful name it is, I'm folding the clothes. What a beautiful name it is, I'm folding the clothes. The name, is that the lyric? Look at the lyrics right quick, look on your phone. I take my phone everywhere, so I'm pretty sure you do as well, I would imagine. Take, have the lyrics already up on your phone and as you're folding clothes, practice singing. Practice singing, sing along with it. Um, what our worship pastor here, uh, Mathen Hilberg, he told me he has three, he's a beautiful wife and three children. The time that he gets to himself sometimes with music is when everybody is asleep. It's in the early morning. Sometimes it's gonna take that. But if you're wanting to strive for excellence, if you're wanting to grow, sometimes it takes getting up in the middle of the night. Sometimes it takes practicing while you're doing the laundry or when you're cooking or when you're washing the car. It takes that. It takes that. But you want it, right? You want to get better. You want to grow. You want to, you want to be able to help people. You want to be able to empower people. It takes the time. So you got to make the effort to do that. All right? So... You guys know I'm a vocal producer. I'm a vocal arranger. Um, I My current role at my local church is I'm a vocal director. So I'm over our choir and I help with our uh, worship teams. We have two main campuses, so I'm in charge of our worship teams. So we're gonna go to my laptop. My laptop, my notebook, and my Bible are my friend. I take them everywhere because they help me. So I tried to pick a song that you, um, I would think you guys are familiar with. Uh, Let Praises Rise by Myron Levi, Myron Butler and Levi. All right. So let me play this right quick. Let me play the actual song. 
And of course, I'm going to fast forward in between. From the inside of me. So you hear that, okay? So this is actually a uh, performance track. So I do other recordings for other artists and multi tracks. So this is what you're hearing the, the behind the scenes stuff, okay? So what I like to do with our choir, with our worship team, and with uh, other teams that I work with everywhere. I did this with, with Gates Praise with their record. I, I do this with everybody, with BJ Putnam, with Israel. I do this with everybody. I take the song and I create uh, the vocal arrangements. Now with this particular song, I just uh, sang the song just as is because sometimes like with our, uh, with our vocal, with our choir and with our worship team, I try to keep the songs, the vocals, identical to the songs. I add a little flavor, a little here and there, but for the most part, I try to keep it the same. So this one is exactly the same, all right? Let's praise as rise from the inside, from the inside of me. Make you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. So let me stop. So the, the program I'm using is Logic. Now I record out of Logic. Some people use Pro Tools. If you're not familiar with any of this, don't stress, don't stress, because I am going to show you a more uh, simplified version and way. But for those who have access to recording, being able to send out vocal arrangements for your worship team, for your choir, what I like to do is label. I have a soprano section, I have an alto section, and I have a tenor section. Now with the choir that I'm over, we have four sections. We have a bass section. However, this song does not require bass, so you're not going to see bass, all right? So, notice I sang the song. Come feel my life. I want to make sure when people sing this, when they're singing along with it, that they're hearing all the detail, all the dynamics. Dynamics meaning crescendo, decrescendo. Crescendo's meaning progressing in sound. Decrescendo means the opposite going opposite, getting quieter, uh, vibrato placement. Vibrato is the shakiness, uh, where to place it and when to place it. So keep listening. From the inside. You hear side, side has no vibrato on purpose. Why? Because the original song, I tried to pattern exactly like it. From the inside of me. Set me on fire. That's another one. Fire. I took out the vibrato, but I'm crescendoing. I'm making it big. From the inside. From the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you. You to be glorified. You hear all of that? So all of that is smooth. Legato means connected. Staccato would be the opposite. Short and really, um, really short. Really short. Let me go. Let me fast forward. From the inside. Notice we have soprano, alto, and tenor parts. So that's what you're hearing, okay? From the inside of me. Make you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. So you're asking, why am I showing you this? If you have access to a garage band or Logic, a Pro Tools, 
and you're wanting your team to be able to practice exactly what you want them to sing, record it. Simply record it. You don't need an expensive studio. You don't need an expensive mic. All you need is a laptop, the program, plug up your, your phone, get some simple headphones, and you're able to record what you want them to sing. So sometimes I'll, uh, I've been to churches and whatnot and teams, and they'll say, um, our, our worship leader wants us to sing this, but we have no way of um, listening to it, or we have no idea of how they want us to execute it. This is the way to do it. You want to grow an excellence worship leader? You want to grow an excellence musician? Record what you want them to sing. Record what you want them to play and how you want them to do it. What kind of dynamics do you want them to have? Do you want them to sing loud? Do you want them to sing soft? Do you want everything to be just straight vibrato? That's up to you, but it takes excellence. It takes practice. So record what you want them to do. I'll show you one more part. This is a, a bigger part of the song, the bridge. So notice how we had a big bridge. Glorify your name, feel my life till all they see is you, Lord. Glorify. Cause all I want. I went back down on purpose in my volume. If you want your singers to do that, record it or show them. Show them so they can hear, okay, I see how you want me to do it. Now let me, let me try to do it, okay? Another way, if you don't have access to this, don't fret. Not everybody has a laptop. Not everybody has these programs. That's totally okay. I do know everybody has a phone. And I also know that everybody has some type of recording app on your phone, whether it be um, an iPhone or an Android, you have some type of voice memo or recording device, okay? So on my phone, I have voice memos. This is another tool that I utilize all the time. I take my Bible, I take my uh, handy dandy notebook, <laughs> that sounds like Blue's Clues, <laughs> and I have my laptop and my voice memos. My voice memos are filled because I'm constantly coming up with ideas and or if at the last second I'm out of town and a singer worship team member says, Charlene, I need parts to raise a hallelujah, or I need help with this soprano part in What a Beautiful Name, I literally sing the part and then send it to them. It is that simple. That simple. You don't need all of this. If you have access to this, great. If you don't, this is great as well. So, as sim this is how simple it is. You're pushing record, whatever song you're wanting to sing. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted high. This is soprano part, unison. This is the chorus. Push stop, let's play it back. Whatever song you're wanting to sing, This is soprano part, unison, this is the chorus. That simple, that simple. You wanna grow in excellence, you want your team to grow, it starts with us as the worship leader, it starts with us as the musician. If you don't have access, don't worry about this, but you do have access to a phone. Practice, practice what, whatever you're wanting to sing, practice what you, whatever you want your team to sing, and send it to them. And then, another tool I've learned, Listen back to it. Listen back to it sometimes before you send it. If you're not the worship leader and you're just wanting to grow in excellence with the tool that God has given to you, listen back to what you sound like. Because the phone, 
the laptop, it doesn't lie. It's going to pick up all your, all the little nasty sounding noises that we make sometimes, including me. Sometimes I'll listen back and I'll say, oh, my vibrato is horrible. I'm, I have a fast vibrato, so I tend to naturally go sharp as opposed to a slow vibrato, which makes you go flat. So sometimes I'm just soaring. It's just soaring and I'm like, oh no, I, let me do that over. Let me not even try to send that to a team member because I don't want them to repeat what I'm singing. They'll practice that same sharpness. Not good, not healthy, and not good for me as, as their leader who's just telling them to sing whatever I sing. If I'm gonna tell you to sing whatever I sing, it's gotta be on point and it's gotta be good, okay? So excellence, 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 not not perfection, not perfection. We're, we're constantly striving for excellence. There's always going to be a tool you can, you can learn. There's always going to be somebody who's better in singing, who's better in playing. Learn from them, look at them, see what tools they're using, see what kind of practice uh, regime that they have. All right. Let me pray with you. But before I pray, I have enjoyed my time with you. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that you have learned and gained something here. I pray that if I could be of any help to you, um, my social media handles are all at the bottom of the screen. I would be more than willing, more than willing to help you and your team, more than willing to speak to you if you are in need of anything. Um, I don't know how to handle uh, recording. Uh, I'm a worship leader, I'm a team leader, and I don't know how to work with other people in my team because we butt heads. Let me speak to you. I've been in a season of that. I can help you with that and, and give you wisdom and, and just some tools of what I did and how God helped me. Let's pray. God, you are faithful, you are kind, you are true, you are loving, you are all sufficient. Everything we need can be found in you. Um, all of our answers, all of our worries, cares, everything, everything we need can be found in you. We don't have to go to a priest or a preacher. We can go directly to you and ask you for everything. And we're so grateful that we have that one-on-one -on -one -on -one communication with you, Father. Um, I lift up the Reset Conference, every single attendee, Every person, God, who is wanting to grow, who is wanting to um, reset their thinking, reset their, uh, their instrument, uh, their ax is dull, how do they sharpen it again, God? I pray, Lord, that I was able to impart and inspire um, and, uh, and uplift someone, God, to, to uh, bring glory and honor to your name, to... Uh, empower someone else, God, to impart into their team's lives. I pray in this season, Father, that um, you would help us not, um, you would help us not to be complacent. This is a season where um, routine has stopped. We are at a standstill um, and sometimes we don't know what to do because we've had a blueprint of what to do for the last how many years. Help us, help us, God. Help us to seek you like King Jehoshaphat and, and Judah and Jerusalem did. Help us to seek you. We need you in this season. How do we continue to lead as worship leaders, God, when we're, um, for the most part, on a screen? How do we lead when, for the most part, we're at home? Teach us. Give us creativity. Help us to spend time with you. Help us to spend time in your word. Give us uh, the wisdom. You said if we ask for wisdom, you would freely give it to us. So we ask for wisdom. We ask for knowledge. We ask for creativity. Uh, we ask for help. That you would help us, God, to be a light, to empower, to inspire, to uplift our teams, to uplift ourselves, God. Like I said, we as worship leaders, singers, and musicians, we're sometimes some of the, some of the most empty people. Um, and we won't tell anyone that because we have to put on a front half the time. So I pray, Lord, for any worship leader, singer, musician who is empty, any pastor who is empty, God, that you would send your angels down just to speak to them and to encourage them and to uplift them, that you would... Um, 
allow certain people to be in their lives and to speak into to speak into them and to encourage and to uplift them god help us help us in this season god this season has been by far the most unique um crazy season ever at the same time this allows us to draw so much more to you this this we have no choice but to draw to you. We have no choice but to lean on you. We have no choice but to depend on you. And your word tells us that, to trust in you with all of our heart, to lean not to our, our own understanding. And in all our ways acknowledge you, you will direct our path. So we have no choice, God, as, as believers. Forget us being the musician and the singer. We have no choice but to trust in you as a believer, God. Help us to... to um, search after your heart, to cling to you in this time, to thirst for you even the more, God. And I pray, I pray, I pray that you will begin to open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts to what you want us to be, how you want us to be it, be it, how you want us to execute whatever it is you want us to execute, whether great or small. And I pray again, God, that you would impart into us creativity to be able to inspire, to lead, and to empower people, God, that we have that uh, that look up to us. We are influencers. So help us to be that, Father. We love you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And again, in spite of the season, we thank you for the season because we have no choice but to trust in you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. Until next time.